Hello. In this video, we're going to be looking at chemical equilibrium for grade 12. Looking at the CAPS curriculum. In the previous grades like grade 11 and 10, we have looked at chemical reactions. And in those chemical reactions, we were concerned with what happens when those reactions reach completion. But we know that in reality, there are chemical reactions that don't necessarily reach completion. They reach a state of equilibrium. In this section, we'll be exploring what it means for a reaction to reach a state of equilibrium. Now, consider this example that we have where you react carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas to give you methane and water. This reaction is a reversible reaction, which means that simultaneously you are having a forward reaction and a reverse reaction. The forward reaction can be seen with this arrow here, and the reverse reaction can be seen with this arrow here. So the double arrow indicate that the reaction is reversible. So you have a forward reaction and a reverse reaction. Now let's talk about equilibrium. What should happen for us to say that a, re a reaction is in a state of equilibrium? Now there are three things. The first one is that both forward and reverse reactions and reverse reactions must happen simultaneously. Must happen simultaneously. As, we, as, as we've already indicated with the double arrow. Secondly, the rate of the forward reaction must be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So rate of forward reaction must be equal to the rate of reverse reverse reaction. It's very important. And lastly, the last condition must be that the concentration of the reactants and products should remain constant with time. So at equilibrium, the concentration of the product and the reactant should remain constant. So with time, they should remain constant. And we'll indicate that graphically. So concentration... of reactants and product remain remain constant with time This is very, very important. So we're saying a reaction is in a state of equilibrium when both the forward and reverse reactions are happening simultaneously, which means they're happening at the same time, when the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse reactions are equal, and when the concentrations of reactants and products remain constant over time. Now, let's look at the example that we have here and perhaps try to draw some graph to indicate what really happens when this reaction reaches equilibrium. I'm just going to delete here so that we have some room to do our drawings. So, graphically, let's look at what happens to the concentration of the reactants and the products as the 
gra as the reaction time lapses so imagine you have this let me draw a straight line you have this situation and then here you'll have the moles of the substances this is just a sketch to indicate what happens as the time lapses in a reaction so you'll typically have the moles of hydrogen here moles of hydrogen you also have the moles of CO the moles of CO somewhere here so like CO so moles of CO and then you'll have the moles of water and the moles of I mean so if you look at so you've got three moles of hydrogen so this will be here and here you'll have one mole of CO somewhere here and then you'll have an equal amount of the moles of methane gas which is the CH4 and and the water as time goes by so these are straight lines here and maybe just to make sure that this starts at a certain value here make sure that it touches the graph so with time as you can see the moles of hydrogen are, are three and then they, they, they decrease as the reaction progresses and also you have one mole of carbon monoxide that decreases as the reaction progresses you have the moles of CH4 being equal to the moles of H2O over time so as you can see the ratio here is 1 is to 1 so the number of moles are equal so as time lapses they start from being 0 they increase and at some point they become constant this is it talks to the last point that we spoke about that the concentrations of the reactants will be constant over time and the concentrations of the products will be constant over time so this is what happens with a, a reaction that is in equilibrium and the other thing that happens is that if you look at the rate of the forward reaction so if you have another graph here you'll have here you'll have the rate of reaction and then here you'll have time you'll have time the rate of the forward reaction versus the rate of the of the re re reverse reaction so what happens is that at some point at some point they become equal these lines become one so the rate of the forward reaction equal to the rate of the reverse reaction at this point and at this point we say that the reaction is at equilibrium when the reaction begins the rate of the forward reaction is, is, is zero and then it increases gradually and the rate for this as well is zero and it, it decreases gradually and then at some point you have the rate of the forward reaction in fact you have the rate of the forward reaction here the rate of the forward reaction here let's use this and the rate of the reverse reaction here so this is what we mean when you say that a reaction is in equilibrium okay